This is a junk journal tutorial created for beginners, so you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff to create a junk journal, and you can get into the venue without the expense. All you need for this journal are some magazine pages, some packaging from your kitchen, an old shirt or fabric, check your closet. I'm sure there's something in you there you haven't worn for years, and a button. The tools that you're going to need are as simple as a ruler, scissors, sharpie and a pencil, a paintbrush, some Elmer's glue, little embroidery thread, and grab some vegetable oil from your kitchen. Once you have all these together, we'll get started and create a junk journal that looks just like this out of your kitchen packaging. My name is Peg. I call my channel to Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment, knock around my channel a bit, <clears throat> and see the things that I am interested in. I love to create journals. I'm learning to engage in different things like encaustic wax. I also have a lot of other things over on the channel. So if you like variety from ATCs to altar playing cards to pockets, come on over, hit that subscribe button, and the notification bell will let you know when I upload additional content. To get started on this 100% junk journal, inexpensive to create, utilizing things that you have around the house that you may have tossed into your trash bin. Let's get started with some food packaging. I've chosen a Lean Cuisine package. Um, I keep these on hand to have in case I need something quick for lunch. But take a look at the overall foundation of this and the small three quarters inch, inch, half inch to three quarters inch fold on this creates a great spine for a book. It also fits that eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of copy paper in there pretty nice. So I just want to make sure that I am not too big over that folded over coffee copy paper because that is what I'm going to use for the foundation of the pages of this book. And I want the edges to be very, very straight. So I'm marking inside from the spine out the exact same distance on the edge, marking that line and just doing my best with the scissors to cut it as straight as possible so we have a nice clean edge. Now for the cover. We're going to utilize magazine pages and I've just taken a catalog that was sent to me in the mail and I'm leafing through here to find color. I'm looking for a color and I like this peachy so I'm pulling that out and I'll find two or three more sheets out of this magazine or pages out of this that magazine that are rich with the color that is appealing to me at this particular moment in time. In there, I like this one because it has that solid green background. It has that nice cinder um, color of the blue, the navy blue, indigo blue. So now we have the magazine pages that we're going to utilize to create the cover. To create the cover, we're going to practice a little Japanese art called mamagami, and that it refers to kneading paper. I've put a little touch of the coconut oil in the center of my palm, and you can use olive oil, vegetable oil, where I have the coconut oil that I purchased to keep in my studio. And we're just going to take it back and forth, back and forth in our hand, kneading it, squeezing it down as tight as you can get it over and over again. Once you've done that seven, eight, ten times, open that up and straighten it out Use your hands to straighten it out. And then do the same process again. The 
opening it up and folding it back kind of puts those wrinkles or folds in different places and you'll start to see the image disappear. The image will not be visible once you've done this numerous times. And it I don't know how many times it will take you. A lot of it depends on your force with the kneading. A lot of it depends on the magazine page. A lot of it depends on the print on the page. So just continue to do it until it takes on that paper, paper-like feel, and you lose you lose the image. So the image is not really noticeable unless you knew exactly what was on that page when, when it started. The page also gets smaller. So you're losing some dimension as you need it and it becomes more fabric-like. So now we have enough pages needed to cover the front of this book. So you can see that each have been kneaded, made into more of a paper-like sub substance, and now it's time to choose the ones that we want to glue to the front of the book. What we are going to use for our glue is a mixture of Elmer's glue and water. So you want a cup of Elmer's glue and a third a cup of water. So one to three ratio. Don't mess with that. It's perfect ratio for a homemade Mod Podge creation. So use whatever size you want, but just remember one third water to the glue. So if you're using a cup of glue, you use one third cup of water. So the Mamagami or the magazine page is see through. And I want to cover up the advertising on the front of this box. So I've pulled out a piece of copy paper and I had it in a stack of pages that were stained or had, a, had something on them. To, and I had that in my gel press stack. So I pulled that out. I shall coat it with our mixture of Elmer's glue and water and just glue the white paper onto the Lean Cuisine box to cover up all the Lean Cuisine advertising. And I'm using my ruler to tear my pages. I'm not looking for a real defined line here or not even really looking for it to go edge to edge. I, the whole purpose of this white paper is to cover up that advertising so it does not bleed through the magazine pages. And I will do that on both sides of this food packaging. So follow along with me. We've used three things already. We've used your Elmer's glue, we've used the food packaging, and we've used magazine pages. We've pulled in copy paper. So all things that are most likely around the house. Now I have a Sharpie and because that magazine page is see-through I thought it would be nice to doodle on that paper in any way that you choose. I'm doing what I refer to as a simic writing. I don't know if that would be correct or if it would just be mark making, but I have in my head something that I want to write and I am writing it so it is not legible. And I am very loosely holding the Sharpie to not really have a lot of control over it and that helps the process of getting it illegible, if you will. So I want that to be able to show through. That's why I chose the Sharpie. Let's do that once again on the other side. And here you can do anything. You can illustrate, you can color, you can scribble, you can do whatever you choose if you choose to do anything. You might choose a solid color of paper to put 
behind your magazine page. Whatever you have on hand. You may have a piece of junk mail that you find really interesting, or you may just want to put an intact, beautiful magazine image underneath it. So get creative. Use, use what you have on hand and make it work. Coating this up with the Elmer's glue and water. And just going to place that magazine page over the top and wrap this piece of packaging like I'm wrapping a gift. The magazine page becomes very thin. Therefore, it's not necessary to trim the edges down because it will fold over just fine without creating a bunch of bulk. Folding that over. And just gluing it into place. That was my iPhone notifying me that tomorrow is New Year's Eve. Like, I wouldn't know. But that's okay. The reminders sometimes are very beneficial. There we go. You can see, see that Sharpie underneath there. And I think that creates some interest. So I like that. However, I did find that that piece of packaging was very, very thin. So in order to put some structure to this book, I have pulled out another piece of packaging and I shall cut that down to the same size as this packaging that we've decorated. I want to cover this and use it as my inside front and inside back covers. In doing so, it just is going to add a little bit of structure to this book. Two notes here. One, you could do this before you ever put the magazine page on, and then you already have it in place. I didn't because I didn't think the Lean Cuisine product packaging was as thin as it, as it was when I got everything together. I thought that the magazine page would shore it up a little bit more than it did. And that's why we're doing what we're doing here. Again, do it now. Do it in advance. Both work. I'm just marking it to make sure I have straight edges. And once I get that to the correct size, we'll cover it and place it inside. So thus far, the tools that have been used have been a ruler and a Sharpie. Everything else we've created the book out of, everything else that we've pulled in, we've created a book out of, and a paintbrush. I forgot the paintbrush. We used a paintbrush to put on the Mod Podge or to put on the substance like Mod Podge that we created out of one cup of glue and one third cup of water. So now we have it ready to go, but we also have our closure. Now the closure was created by cutting out two rectangular pieces of that packaging and gluing them together. They were glued together with just straight glue, not with the Mod Podge, just with the straight Elmer's glue. And now I want to come up with a way to cover them. But what I'm finding, I rounded off the edge of this when I created it originally. And because I'm covering it, I really don't want to mess with trying to cover that rounded edge. So I shall just straighten that up 
and make this just a straight rectangular closure. And there we go. Now this is a piece of packaging that I received in a, in a gift um, that came over the holidays. It, it was this beautiful color of an olive green. So I grabbed that and took it to my shop and I thought this would be a good opportunity to use it. So I shall use it in this particular project. Well, I'll use part of it. So I crinkled it up to give it some texture and some definition, if you will. And now I'm just folding that over and wrapping that rectangle in this packaging. And I don't remember what I received that used this olive green packaging, but I wish I could. <laughs> I, I, I prefer the, the colored packaging when it comes versus the dirty white look, but we'll use, we'll use what they give us, right? So now that's, that's all covered. I have a cold cup of coffee that I started drinking this morning, and I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to add some color to this with a little bit of coffee staining. So I'll just take my dry paintbrush and dip it in that cold cup of coffee and stain up this piece of um, shipping paper that I've wrinkled and expose those wrinkles. I shall do the same with both of those end pieces that I created. So I'm just ripping it to make sure that I have enough to cover those end pieces. And I'm going to have to piece that together because of the way it ripped, or the way it was in the, in the box. Pulling out the Elmer's glue and water, and we'll just wrap this up. And again, this is just shipping paper, if you will, so it's not real thick. So I'm not trimming it, I'm just folding it over. And I'm being very generous with my glue and water. I'm trying to do this whole project without any real purchased items or without an abundance of purchased items. So there we go. We have that in place. We'll just glue that into place on the inside front and we'll, or the inside back and we'll do the same thing on the inside front. So the book is starting to take shape. A little bit but before we do this side let's make sure we get that closure in so this will be the back of the book and I'm using a straight glue here you can use the straight Elmer's glue to glue this into place Get that down. I don't know why I pulled from the front to put on the back, but I think that I was panicked because I'd put that glue down and I didn't want to waste it, so I used what I had on hand. And the other piece uh, I don't think was completely dry, so that's why you saw that little pull from one, Rob, 
rub one side to complete the other. So now to finish that other side off, I had to patch it together or collage together the papers. So I left this in just simply because you don't have to have a full sheet of something to cover. Use what you have on hand, patch it together, make it like a patchwork quilt, uh, a patchwork piece. This is, after all, a junk journal. So what you have on hand is what you want to use first. And you will never look at the tissue paper that comes in a gift the same or the food packaging that you purchase processed food in. Trying to get away from that. But, you know, it's always, it's always a challenge when you're very, very busy. There, I'm just positioning it, making sure that it is positioned in a way that is appealing to the eye. There we go. You know, the time, the time of this, I know this is a 45 minute video. This project actually took me a good, probably five to six hours to put together. Just, you know, so you're not thinking that this is a, a um, 45 minute project. There's a lot that was edited to, to put this together and, I'm running it on two times the speed. Going back through the entire book once it's dried to just glue everything down once again with that um, full glue, not the mixture of glue and water. And there. Now everything is in place. I'm running my hands over it to make sure there's nothing that is catching, nothing that is coming up. There's the little closure. And now the book is, is really starting to take shape. So now we need to do two things. We need to add a tie to close the book. We need to cover the inside spine and cover the outside spine. That's when I pulled something out of my rag bag or out of my closet, a shirt that I had just worn into almost tatters. And it is a um, silky fabric in this tan color, which I thought would, would work well. I had also spilled some ink uh, when I was working with trying to figure out my fountain pen and got a little crazy with the ink. So there, that will work nicely there. I'll just glue that into place. Now, here's, here's another thing that I want to mention at this particular point. You can see that I'm just lining that glue on. What I don't realize when I'm doing this is when I lay this fabric down, it's going to show every line of that glue. Had I laid that glue down and then taken a old hotel key card or an old credit card and spread that glue out, I would not have the line definitions of where I put my glue or where I laid that glue down. So just a, just a little side note, it doesn't bother me because this is a junk journal. I will eventually cover that up by adding a spine embellishment or um, who knows what, what will happen there. And, and it may go away when it dries. I don't know. We'll see. Now I am fraying 
the edges of that fabric so that we have a little bit of fringe on the top and bottom of the spine. Okay, so that is where or how that's going to close. We have the outside spine covered with the fabric and now I have just pulled another piece of that fabric in a very long strip. I shall glue that to the inside of this closure and that's what I will use to close this book. I'll be able to wrap that fabric around and close, close the book. And the button, I shall sew to the edge of this. And I'll be able to wrap the fabric around the button. Now I'm using a craft pick to poke the holes. You can use the needle that you have um, to sew your embroidery thread with. So just grab a needle, grab a nice pick. If you have a craft pick, use that. But don't you don't need to buy anything. Use use what you have. I'm sure you have something that you can poke a hole with. I'll thread that needle up and knot it on one end. Yeah. Double knot two threads will make this good and sturdy. And I'll go through the hole that I poked and attach that button. And come back up, sew through that a couple of times, make sure that's on there nice and secure. I'm going to tie that off in a square knot and trim those threads. And that will give us the closure for this book. Wrap it around like that. Wrap this around the button. And there. So now I'm just going to use my scissors and cut some of that off on a slant. And there, I think this book is, is turning out pretty cute. So now let's cover that inside spine. There's that ink on that and I'm just going to embrace that and use it. That ink drop looks like a little heart to me. So we'll just incorporate that into the spine of this book. Back with the glue. Now you would have thought that I would have noticed when I glued that outside that I was going to see those glue marks and that I would have taken a hotel key card or a credit card, old credit card, and spread that out. But alas, I did not. So here we go. And just making sure that that is glued down nice and secure on the inside of this book. And we're going to put the signatures here anyway, so it's not going to be noticeable. Do 
just going back and securing anything that looks like it might be slightly loose or there might be a gap fringing up that fabric. And there. Let's tie it back up again and see what we have. So I think that works. I think that's going to make a, a pretty good little book cover. Not bad for a piece of garbage that would have landed in the trash bin, right? So this is um, a quick and easy way to create a book cover. And I really like the way the magazine pages appear on the front and back of this with that Sharpie coming through. It's actually created a very attractive cover. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. I hope thus far you've been intrigued enough to stick with me on how to create this book and if so go ahead and give me one of those thumbs up that does help my channel and I would love to have you subscribe and come back and join me as I do other things but to finish this book I am going to coffee stain some paper now, you can use nothing but copy paper for the inside signatures of the book, and that would work out just great. I like to use instant coffee to stain my paper because I can get the, de the depth and the degree of color by how much coffee I add. You can also utilize just a brewed pot of coffee. You can take what you don't drink if you drink it without adding cream and sugar, of course. You can put that in a container until you have enough to stain paper, but I am just putting some instant coffee in this tin and mixing it with the water, getting it the depth of color that I choose, and I am dipping my pages in that, setting them on a separate table and lying them independently on top of a towel to dry. And that is how easy coffee staining can be. Now you can get very creative with it and do a lot of different things, but this is just your basic dip the paper in the coffee and get that coffee stain on it. Now that I have my paper prepared, everything is dry, I've taken all of those sheets of copy paper that were coffee stained, folded them in half, and I've looked at what I have around. And I had an old dictionary that I've pulled some dictionary pages out. I have some book sheets that I'm using. I had some lined paper that was left over in a pack. Some There's the book page. I believe I have... Um, from a composition notebook. This was a project that I did um, in my altered composition notebook playlist. You'll see me alter a bunch of different composition notebooks. Some graph paper, some in sheets off of a book, some music sheets, a recipe page, you name it. Whatever you have on hand, you can use to create your signature. I am putting 10 pieces of paper Per signature. I didn't pay attention to the size when I pulled them together. I am ripping all of them down to the size I want. Now you will notice I have a plastic ruler here and I'm using that plastic ruler on the jagged edge to tear. I created my own tear ruler out of this plastic ruler. You can buy these at the dollar store in a pack of three for a dollar. I took a pair of pliers and just broke the ruler with the pliers down along the edge to create that tear ruler. Now I have all of my pages together. 
I'm going to go back and get them in the order that I want. And I'm creating three signatures for this book. So there we go. There is signature one, number one together. And we will get together two more signatures and then show them into the inside of this book. So there you have signature one, signature two, and signature three. And let's just see how they'll fit. And they're going to fit nicely into the book. Those little jagged edges look very nice on the top, the side, and the bottom. And I can easily fit them in, close the book, and still have plenty of room if I want to embellish. Now this is just a diagram for sewing the signature. We want to start with that blue in the center hole. Push your needle from the inside center hole to the outside of the cover. Then we'll come back in that top hole and follow number two, which is that green line going down to that very bottom hole poking it through to the outside cover, coming back in through that middle hole, following that red line, back up to that middle hole, and then we shall tie everything off in a square knot. So wanted to explain it before we started to do it. Now I am using these clips. You can use paper clips. You can use clips. You don't need to if you if you don't want to. I like to clip it together just so my sheets don't move. And I will take my embroidery thread and measure out three times the height. And that will give me plenty of thread to sew the signature. That's my cat jumping on the screen door wanting in. He can, he can wait just a second. And I will poke my center hole with that needle and I am just eyeballing it. If you want to be very precise, you can measure your exact center, come up a half inch from the top and a half inch from the bottom. You need three holes. But I am choosing to just eye it and now I will sew that in to the signature as my first signature. So I, I shall put that about a quarter inch from the edge. And we'll go through the center hole. Now I'm going to come back and take a look where that top hole is to make sure that I poke this top hole in at the appropriate distance. And we'll go through that signature. And then remember, we're going to go from the top hole to the bottom hole. So we'll come from the outside in here. I'm just clearing my hole. You don't want to go through this way. I'm just clearing it to make sure that my pages are aligned. And now I'll go from the back of that to the front, and now down to the bottom hole. And we'll go through to the outside of the book here. You <laughs> see my cat's getting very impatient. And now we'll come back in and I want one thread on each side of this center thread. And I'll tie that off in a knot. And double knot it. And there we go. So the first signature is sewn in. I have also sewn in that second signature, but I thought I would show you how I 
sew the third one in so you can see how I line those holes up. So the first thing I'm going to do is poke the hole from the outside just directly across. That way I know that when I finish, the spine is going to be directly aligned and everything will be in sync, if you will. So I've poked those holes first. Now I'm laying my signature down next to the holes and marking with a pencil on the inside where I want to poke the holes on the signature. And this is how I did signature number two as well. So signature two and signature three you want to mark. Now the other thing that you can do is create yourself a template um, out of a little piece of cardstock, but um, that's another another whole lesson. <laughs> So let's just do it this way. We get that needle threaded up. We'll sew in this final signature and this book will be complete. I'm going to leave the final sew of that signature in just so you have one more opportunity to look at that. If, if you've got it, go ahead and uh, move forward to the show or the slideshow or the slide collage of the finished book. But let's get this sewn in and we will take a look at the finished piece. And I will bid you adieu. Okay, we're coming back for in the final stitch coming through to the center and we'll tie that off in a square knot. And this book is complete. So let's take a look at what we've created. I like the signatures with the random pages in it, but once again, I've done them with just plain coffee stained paper. But here you go. The finished piece. So thank you for taking the time to spend with me. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. Here is a playlist on other journals that I have made. If you enjoy doing this, you'll probably enjoy doing many more. So thank you once again, and I shall say bye for now.